Welcome back. And that sound is a fresh crack from old Jay Wayne. What you drinking on, old Jay Wayne? I got a little Revelry Brewing Company action going per use. The Lefty Lucy, brewed in the left coast tradition. It's dry and bitter IPA. Front end loaded with those old school hop varieties that help define the style. Hang loose with this bitter, quenching glass of sunshine. Mm, How could you not want to do that? Also, drink up. One of the owners is a lefty. Yeah. As am I. We bond over that. Weirdos. The lefty community. When you get in a room with another lefty, you just know. How's the pencil marks on your Oh, it's terrible. (laughs) It's terrible. (laughs) Dragging through the wedding. Just just a smudge of homework. (laughs) (laughs) Anyhow. Speaking of homework, let's get into this show. Yeah. So another uh, current piece of current event, staying in the Northeast. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go over to Buffalo, where the Bills just traded for Corey Coleman. Um, yes, they did. And we we got a couple of things to talk about over in Buffalo. Things have been going down over there. Kelvin Benjamin's uh, popping off at the mouth. Old Lashawn McCoy's got some. Things and stuff allegations, going on. Allegations, allegations allegedly. Some, I, I got some interest of you know what what were the group is thinking about Lashawn McCoy. We've been doing some rankings. I got some interest in what's going on over there. But let's start on the brown side of this thing before we get heavy into the bills and get depressed. <laughs> um, which I mean, you usually say. I, mean, I guess this is kind of it's a lose lose right. here. Browns or Bills? Browns mm-hmm. are on bills, the Bills. Browns. Browns. Bills, bills made the playoffs, but who saw that coming? Don't even remember that. Yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> All right, so Corey Coleman to the Bills, and do you want to talk about Corey Coleman first, or do you want to talk about the... Let's get into the residuals over there in Browntown. Okay. Right? Because they're without they're without uh, Corey Coleman. They traded him. See ya. Josh Gordon may or may not be a head case. We don't know what's going on there, but they did... I saw on Roto World today that they did do the right thing, and, yep, or gonna... at least the gentlemanly thing, and basically are going to... Kind of count take him off some list that's right, going to rec- basically start counting his time now, so that he won't be a restricted free agent or or it doesn't count against his uh, yeah, calendar that, year. Doesn't push him back another year right. for a free agency. What kind of message is that send though to the rest of your team? Like if you're the best, you can just give well, up. I, whatever I, think, I think they don't give a shit about that. They're just trying yeah, to just make sure Josh Gordon is yeah. So all oh, right up here. Do you want to you want to stick right right on the Josh Gordon thing here right now, or you keep it rolling? I, I mean, we talked about, we it, last talk about week. it last week, but I mean, this is, this is yeah, I don't I don't think there's any need to speculate on what's going on with Josh Gordon. We don't know. We're not going to know the right answer. So what this does mean is that Jarvis Landry is just going to keep trucking along. Sure. Like yeah, that was the first thing that popped into my head. Like I'm super stoked about everything that's going on. All my Jarvis shares. Yeah. Not that I, you know, I, you said it best at some point is he's, he's one of those guys that you just always find a reason to not want Jarvis Landry or not take Jarvis Landry or hate on Jarvis Landry on your team every year. Somebody, somehow, some way. Right. Whether it's Jay Cutler or Ryan Tannehill or the ADOT or Matt Kelly or Twitter, whatever it is, there's a reason. Or Josh Gordon or the, too or many mouths to feed or depth yeah i already said i think that. you're gonna be just <laughs> fine with jarvis landry like you always are right you're literally always just fine with jarvis landry you, you might get you might get uh maybe you're not gonna get jarvis landry of last year where he scored eight maybe nine touchdowns quite on that level but you're gonna be very safe and feel very comfortable he's gonna be a safety blanket they're already saying him and, and tyrod just connecting Right. And well, Jarvis Landry got 160 targets last year. Obviously, he's not going to get 160 targets this year, but the best of the best in the league outside the top 3 wide receivers get 104, you know, like you, if you right. get if you get 140, you had a massive a, you had a massive opportunity share, mm-hmm. you know. So like if Jarvis Landry loses 25%, he still got 130 targets, 125 sure. 130 targets. So and just my Existing Jarvis Landry shares got some confidence, a, a resurgence of confidence, of you know, like a little bolstering of yes, okay, it's not all gloomy that he went to the Brown because they fell asleep fifteen minutes earlier. Right, right. They're they are the Browns. Right. So the Browns have gotten you over and over and over again when you're trying to find fantasy. Not points this in time, there though. Not this time. So the the confidence level for my existing Landry shares is back up or back, you know, not sky high like they were when he was getting 160 targets but back up there 
And but then but, but, to but be now fair. but now you have the videos <laughs> and <laughs> these you know he's scorching cats at practice. They're moving him around. Obviously, I want him to still live in the slot because I want 115 catches. I don't care if he gets 1,500 yards. I want the the catches. I want the week in and week out scores. But like we talked about a couple weeks ago, he you know with the massive amount of touchdowns he had last year and all being like within the 10 yard line, I thought that was a plus just showing that he could do it. He you can't cover him no matter where he's at on the field, no matter where your team is at on the field, Mm -mm. and it's showing up again in Cleveland here. So yes, existing shares of Landry feels great. Just put Landry on the crossing routes, yeah. So the crossing route crusher Mm. can continue to just kick and dicks. (laughs) That's what he's going to do. But to be fair, like I'm, I'm my computer is moving extremely slow right now but like you didn't think that Jarvis Landry was getting 160 targets last year and you were still excited about Jarvis Landry I love that love that (laughs) you didn't see that coming last year I mean in 2015 he did have 260 or 166 targets but then it went down to 131 in 2016 so I mean and then back up to 161 so average the same amount of points per game as as Julio Jones last year covered this already dude so I mean you would imagine that the TDs, I mean, maybe he doesn't have nine again, but I would imagine he's got six or seven at least on this team. Why not? Who else are going to throw it to? And I think with Tyrod at the helm, this is a decent offensive line. This should be a good offensive line, and they should be able to have a run game. And maybe Josh Gordon's there. Maybe he's not. If he's not, it's even better for Jarvis. If he is, it's not It's not the end of the world for Jarvis. Jarvis is still going to do his thing. He's going to be the safety blanket for that team and your fantasy team. Yeah, and obviously they paid the man very handsomely. They liked what they saw, and what what we're taking out of this is they are happier than they expected. He's right. beating, and he's not only meeting expectations; he's beating expectations. And from all the, you know, guys sitting around watching the watching the practices and the training camp and posting videos and posting things like Landry's the best player on the field for the Cleveland Browns right, right. now. Obviously, Josh Gordon isn't there, but he's a running back at the wide receiver position or at least he has been in recent years sure he, he gets his the ball yak is up his there with awesome all the, running with the ball backs. in his hands and he, you can't cover him good luck that what you're going to see in the hands tyrod the taylor oh, the you're going to see you're going to see tyrod taylor buying time moving out of the pocket and finding jarvis landry over and over and over again yeah I'm telling you, just like it's going to be their safety blanket, just like it's going to be your safety blanket for your team. Jarvis Landry. I like you. (laughs) Right. All right. So so you want to go to Joku next or you want to go to the rookie Callaway here? Well, with Coleman out, what's your what's your interest in, in Callaway here? Because there's I mean, not a lot to see. There's not. You can't. He was all t- out of football last year. Right. You can't watch hardly any games on him. You can go back and watch some like high school all star games and Gordon, stuff. Gordon hasn't been there, so he's. I would. I don't. I haven't done a ton of research, but I'm assuming that Callaway's been getting a fair amount of at least one team one reps for this squad. Because I mean, it was Corey Coleman, Jarvis Landry, and uh, Antonio Callaway being your starting three if Josh Gordon's not around. Sure, uh, people float out Rashad Higgins' name and stuff right, like but that. But they've been saying that Antonio Callaway has been unguardable in, in practice, too. Like, Antonio Callaway has looked excellent and been as advertised throughout camp. So, I mean, this definitely makes me, like, I, I spent a lot of third-round draft picks on Antonio Callaway. I'm super excited about it. I'm, I'm all in. I think this is just good for your stock here. And, and in a startup, I'm definitely more inclined to put Antonio Callaway on my team for sure. He wasn't even somebody that I was really considering in startups, but now he's definitely on my radar. Yeah, and I mean the fact that he didn't play football last year in college because of the problems, but then still gets picked in the in the fourth round, which in in the early fourth round because it was only pick one hundred five, so that must be pretty pretty close to the maybe top ten in the fourth round. Like that's some pretty heavy draft capital for a guy that can't even right. make, can't even stay well, in the rules. A lot of people were rules. saying that if he would have played, he probably would have been the number one receiver in this draft. There was a lot of that floating yeah. around. If not the number one, maybe number two. I just never like these situations where I can't actually look it into a guy. I got to just know basically everything you've said, that he's got the number one kind of wide receiver talent. Well, there's some older stuff to look at, but it's, it's, it's not, not a ton. ton. I mean, and it's like a, basically a bunch of screen passes, and he's just more athletic than everybody out there. Like, So, I mean... I, I just don't know that he's got it between the head. I don't know anything about him other than the fact that he played didn't play for a year and they drafted him in the he's top very of the fourth athletic. round. Yeah, and, and he's only 21 years old. 
So, I mean, but he's 5'11", 200 pounds, so he's not like he's 175 pounds. Dude's supposed to be legit. And like you said, Jay Wayne, we really don't have a lot to go off of. Uh, and, and it's the Browns that made that move, no less. So mm. it's not like some, you know, right. established – Solid All you team. Saw. No, it's not like the Steelers, who year in and year out have been selecting really good receivers for the last five or seven years. All you saw all day long today was graphics of the draft picks that the Cleveland Browns have made and been that terrible aren't, at. that aren't even on the team anymore. Yes, yes. Like and like a page full of them. Yeah, out of here, out of here. So to your point, yeah, it's not like the Browns have a huge track but record of making John good Dorsey's picks. John Dorsey's in the in the office now, and you could say what you want. You might have been a Sashi Brown guy. I'm not here to debate any of that kind of stuff. It seems like John Dorsey. Has got this this train heading in the right the most right of directions that it's been hanging that it's been heading towards. Yeah, maybe you didn't give Shashi Brown a fair shake at things, but they've kind of removed a lot well, of those guys. You cannot and, argue with the draft picks that he accumulated. Right. You can argue with the pat. You can argue with the hey. You can we, argue with how they used them. You can argue with the fact. Oh well, they didn't take Wentz when they could have taken Wentz. Well, nobody knew if that Wentz was going to be that right. good, or if somebody would have paid more than the Eagles even paid for him. You know, sure. you don't know. It wasn't Andrew Luck coming out. You didn't know he was going to be that good, but the Eagles hit home run. And, you know, so, yeah, I I love the draft equity that they I built heard DP up. say this today, Dan Patrick. He said it's not about, like, doing all that is is great and all, but it's about who's making those picks. Like, yeah. you can have as many picks as you want. And, yeah, I get that philosophy of going through and trying to grab all these guys and basing it a lot on metrics and all that other stuff. But who's, like, there's certain guys in this league who just draft better than other guys in this league. And oh, no the doubt. Cleveland Browns hadn't done a good job of They can have as many picks as they want. They were still missing on them. Yeah. All right. I think one more thing about Antonio Callaway that kind of like kind of ruined any kind of excitement that I had for him was when he failed the drug test at the combine. Yeah. Come on, man. Right. Are you serious? Well, I mean, you kinda, Are you serious? You knew that was coming. That's though. for real, though. If a guy who just missed the, the season for reasons that he missed the season. Like credit you, card fraud, and you drug know, arrests, he's, and he's, a, he's a bit of a knucklehead. But the combine, like, there's not a more John set Dorsey, in stone. John Dorsey loves taking shots on the knuckleheads. Tariq Hill is on the Chiefs right now, and everybody wants a piece of Tariq Hill. So yes, things can happen. John Dorsey doesn't mind taking a uh, taking a swing here. Yeah. So well, I mean, Sashi Brown was only there for two years, right? So he he accumulated. He, not that he made the, any of his picks were good while he was there, but he he accumulated. So it's like, yeah. I I completely agree. I'm not going to disagree with hardly anything old DP says, but yes, I like the fact that he accumulated the picks that he did. You can say what you want to about the Wentz pick. Who they would have obviously taken him if he thought he was going to do that. But you can sit there and say, all right, well the Eagles thought because they traded up for him. But you know now he's gone. The who's the, who's there now? Who who you say, what's his name? The uh, Browns. John Dorsey. GM. Dorsey's in there. For all accounts, has a great draft. Who knows if, if, if you know the Baker's going to actually pan out and be the guy that should have been the first quarterback taken? But he didn't take the running back; took the quarterback. I would have rather had Bradley Chubb instead of the cornerback, but who knows? But they're saying Denzel Ward has looked outstanding and is a difference maker on this field already. And that could is, be that could be right. huge because I would I would think it's sometimes it's easier to find a pass rusher than it is a corner, a good corner, a lockdown corner. So I get on, I can get on board with that if he's playing well. They just obviously they you know have whiffed and whiffed and whiffed on all their picks. So you just don't have much confidence in them till they show you some reason to have confidence. 